Hey, it's Dead Guy Cardboard. All right, we're into another off season this year, so time for another off season cards to pick up video. I did one last year. Um, seemed to be a pretty big hit with people, so I wanted to do another one for sure. Um, decided to do it now. Um, I did my other one in February, last February, but um, I'm gonna be uh, on my honeymoon and, and my wedding in January and February, so start it off now. All right, so these these um, players that I'm mentioning are all going to be um, players that I think are currently great deals to pick up in the off season. Um, they're players that have cooled off a bit, especially this off season. I would argue even um, they're going to be kind of off their radar for a bit um, at the beginning of this upcoming season as well. Um, these are all rookie cards I'm mentioning, and um, they're not necessarily cards that are geared towards short-term flipping, although I think a lot of these players could potentially pull off an MVP season in the near future. Uh, but several of these players, I think, could be worth holding on to um, long-term if you're just a you know, collector and not, not a, like a seller or flipper. These are some players that could turn into real you know, future studs and maybe even Hall of Famers. Uh, but I think right now that they're all um, selling at really kind of bargain prices. Um, all right, first player I wanted to mention, this is a guy I mentioned in my last um, pickup video in the offseason, so I'm just doubling down on this guy, um, Francisco Lindor. Uh, he could be traded this offseason off to a bigger market like the LA Dodgers, uh, which could really increase the, his, the value of his cards. He's one of the best shortstops in the league. He's just an elite defensive player and a superb offensive player. Um, He's on track to getting to 3,000 hits or maybe even 500 home runs, and he's only 27. But, you know, he's got he definitely have some years to go to, to pull that off. But um, still a young player and um, just an exciting player to watch as well. <clears throat> um, his best card to get is his 2011 Bowman Chrome Auto. And the flagship card to get, which is a card I mentioned uh, last year, which is kind of like a dark horse card, is his 2015 Topps Chrome card. The 2015 Topps Chrome card actually came out before his 2015 Topps Update card. So the Chrome card is actually his true first flashic rookie card that came out in packs. And it's also a short printed card, much more short printed than his uh, update, update card. And um, just to kind of as a bonus, bonus card to pick up of his is um, if you want to go after the Topps Update card, I'll look into getting the Topps Update Sparkle Under Glove variation. So uh, from that year and a couple years prior, Topps would like hide sparkles in, in various cards. And for Lindor's car, there's a little sparkle underneath his glove. And those are very tough cards to find. Uh, also just very hard card to find in a, in a PSA 10. But that could be a hot card to get if, if uh, Lindor wins an MVP for sure. Okay, so now moving into some players I didn't mention last year that are worth looking at this offseason. First guy is Edwin Encarcion. A uh, very low risk, high reward player. He's a DH, but he has hit at least uh, 30 home runs over eight consecutive seasons. And he may actually be on track to reaching the 500 home run milestone. He's 30, 36 and he's currently at uh, 414 home runs. So he has to average about 28 29 home runs over three years to reach that milestone, which I think he's capable of. I mean, he's averaged 30 home runs, at least 30 home runs in the last eight consecutive seasons. He is 36, so he's aging, but uh, it's possible. Um, he's a free agent now, and he may longer be with the Yankees um, come the new season, but I don't think that would hurt his hobby because he doesn't really have much hobby anyway. Um, his best card is this card. It's the 2004 Skybox Autographics sort of a unique um, card because Edwin doesn't have any Bowman Chrome autos. This is his best prospect card. This is his first auto card. And the autographic set is kind of unique in that it's very short printed. So this is like the base card. It's, it's the blue, it's out of 188. And then he has a silver out of 100 and a gold out of 50. So there's not a whole lot of these autographs, prospect autographs of Edwin and Carcion. Um, uh, they're also just very, um, sensitive to chipping so they won't really grade high but uh, there's just not a huge supply of this card so if he ever reaches the milestone these cards can be very popular um, 
If you're looking for his first flagship card, it's the 2001 Topps Chrome 616 card. It's a uh, it's a dual card, and it's a really tough set to get in high grade. It's, it chips a lot on the back, um, but I don't know. His cards are just so cheap. I mean, you can get this card under twenty dollars. I would go after his autograph card for sure. Uh, next player on the list is Bo Bichette. Um, I think he was kind of overlooked because he's on the same team as Vlad. He was, uh, I guess you consider last year his rookie season. I don't know if it will qualify as a full rookie season because he only played 46 games. But he had very impressive stats in just those 46 games. I mean, he's only 21, and um, he batted 311 with 11 home runs in 46 games um, and 61 hits. So I think he has big potential. He still has a lot to prove. I mean, so who knows? But his best card is his 2016 Bowman Chrome Auto card, which you can get for around $250 in a PSA 10 or BGS 9.5. Uh, his flagship rookie card has not come out yet, but it's probably going to be in the 2020 Top Series 1 sets. If not, it could be in Series 2, but I have a feeling it's going to be in Series 1. Um, that could be the smarter move to pick up is his flagship tops card over his Bowman Chrome card because he's you know he still has a lot to prove. He only played 46 games, but I think uh, Bichette's definitely a player you should you know look at and uh, not pass up possibly in this off season. Um, next guy on the list is Jordan Alvarez, the Rookie of the Year. He's just a hell of a player. I mean, he hit 27 home runs in just 87 games and he batted 313. Um, his best card is the 2018 Bowman Chrome Auto. Which I think is relatively affordable. It's it's around three hundred fifty dollars in a PSA ten and you know slash BGS nine five. Um, again, he's just a rookie. He's a lot to prove. You know, players do have small, sophomore slumps, so who knows? So maybe your better bet is to to pick up his flagship rookie card when it does come out. He doesn't have one yet, but it will probably be the two thousand twenty top series one. Um, so that could be a really hot set if Bobachet and Jordan Alvarez is in it. So look out for the top Series 1 set. Um, next player on this list is the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Um, he had what many felt was a pretty disappointing rookie season. But I think this guy still has a lot of proven power. I mean, just look at the bombs he put on display um, at the Home Run Derby. I mean, he's only 20, and supposedly... He's going to get in better shape this offseason, which I think is a, you know, a big issue from him, for him is his weight. I think if he slims down a bit, he can get even more power and um, you know, maybe some more consistency. Uh, I, think he's, I think he's definitely capable of, of hitting five or 50-plus home runs in a season. I mean, he's got that kind of raw power. Um, his best card, I think, is just really too pricey to pick up now, but it's his 2016 Bowman Chrome Auto. Let's go for about $850 in a PSA 10 or a BGS 9.5. But the card I would, I would really go after is his top flagship card. It's the uh, 2019 Top Series 2 missing card number. Um, he was inserted in the Series 2 kind of late, so he never got a card number. And actually, those cards are kind of trimmed shorter. Um, uh, but PSA is aware that those that specific card is actually trimmed a little shorter than the other cards from Series 2. But it is a short print. But there are over 2,200 graded by PSA, so it's not nearly as rare as the Lacuna Bat Down card that everyone was after last year. And that was also a card I mentioned to pick up last year for 200 bucks, And at its height, it went for $1,000, and now it's $800. So if you watched my video from last year and you got that card, man, did that card pay off for you. Um, and a bonus card to pick up for Vlad would be uh, the 2019 Top Series 2 Mystery Auto card. Um, that's to me the the autograph to get over his Topps Chrome autos from that year, because there's just so many different Topps Chrome autos. There's like so many different variations. There's rook, you know, there's refractors, there's blue refractors, blue waves, golds, etc., etc., etc. Whereas the the Topps Series Two Mystery Auto is just just one variation, and it's a pretty short printed card. Um, it looks identical to his paper card, uh, except the back has some sort of like you're a winner on the back of it. But that I think could be a pretty hot card in the future if, if, if Vlad picks up steam in the hobby. Um, all right, next guy on this, on uh, some players to look out for in the offseason is Mookie Betts. Um, he could be a free agent soon. Um, 
The original rumors were that he could be traded this winter, but now it's kind of presumed that the Red Sox are going to hold on to him for at least a year. Um, but he's, I, I, it was sort of almost, I, I, I don't know, I guess you could say kind of forgotten about last year by the media um, because he didn't put up quite the stats he did when he won the MVP the prior year and because his team didn't make the playoffs. But he's, he's still a stud. He's still, had, I think, a fantastic season. I mean, last season he had a 6.8 war, um, finished eighth in the MVP voting. He's only 27. Um, his best card is the 2014 Bowman Chrome Auto card, which is like $300 less than it was around this time last year, um, or $200 less. And his um, flagship card to pick up is the 2014 Topps Update um, batting variation. So all these cards have really cooled off since the 2018 MVP season. So I think now is a pretty good time to pick up his cards. It is a little risky, you know, if he gets traded to a smaller market than Boston. Um, but I think he's, I think he's a, you know, on track of, of maybe making the Hall of Fame. He's just, you know, that good of a talent. Um, all right, next player on this list is Zan Xander Bogarts, another Red Sox player. And in my opinion, one of the least appreciated shortstops in the league. Um, and I think he could be put more in the spotlight if the Red Sox really you know, can't hold on to Mookie Betts. And um, Bogarts had a great year this year. He, he had a 5.2 war this year, batted 309 with 33 home runs and 190 hits. He's only 26 and has 1,200... 1,022 hits. Um, so you, you, you'd be surprised if you look at his stats. He might be on pace to getting 3,000 hits if he can play late into his 30s. But, you know, a lot can go wrong. You never know. Um, but his cards are just cheap. I mean, his best card is his 2012 Bowman Chrome Auto, which you can get for around $150 in a PSA 10 or a BGS 9.5. And his flagship uh, Tops card is the 2014 Tops number 133. And you can get a PSA 10 for under $30 right now in the offseason. All right, next guy on this list, I think, is another guy who's kind of largely overlooked by the hobby. It's Alex Brigman. Um, he had just another great year this year. He came in second in the MVP voting. Um, he had an 8.4 war um, last season with 41 home runs. He's just a very charismatic guy's, guy. Um, kind of really the face of his, of the team and there's so many great players in the Astros and I, I think the Astros are going to be good for, for years to come even with the whole you know sign ceiling controversy they're dealing with now um, but uh, yeah I think you know the Astros are going to be in many more World Series and um, he's going to be put in the spotlight more and more um, and his best card is the 2018 Bowman Chrome Auto which you can get for around $350 in a PSA 10 or BGS 9.5 and then 2019 tops number 341 is the flagship card to pick up of his and you can get that for around $45 this offseason in the PSA 10. All right, next guy on the list of players to to look at and possibly pick up this offseason, Eloy Jimenez. Um like Vlad many believe didn't live up to the hype. Um but he did have a late season surge and ended the season with 31 home runs in 122 games. He's just 23 and, and uh, just a big, powerful guy at 6'4". And he's got a lot to work on, though. I mean, he strikes out a lot, and he's not great on defense. But like Vlad, I think he has the potential of putting up a 500 or put up a 50 home run season. Um, I think he could still do it, even if Major League Baseball does some changes to the ball. I mean, there's some rumors that they might make the ball less juiced in the upcoming season or, or, or two. Um, but he's just a big, powerful player. I, I think he's going to still just slam balls. And the White Sox are just really stacked. I mean, they could be, um, you know, a, a big-time contender soon. They're going to call up Michael Kopech again after he comes back from Tommy John surgery. He could be a really good pitcher. And they have another um, prospect stud, uh, Luis Robert, coming up. Um so the White Sox could be could be a, a team that could be uh, giving getting a lot more spotlight, and Eloy Jimenez could be cranking away at some some bombs. Okay, uh, next guy. I think he is the most underrated player in all of baseball right now, Freddie Freeman. He hit 38 home runs and 170 hits um, last season. 
He's getting uh, overshadowed now by Acuna on the Braves, um, but he's just a great player. I mean, he's on pace for reaching possibly 500 home runs and 3,000 hits. He's at 227 home runs and 1,451 hits at just 29. I mean, he needs to stay healthy in his 30s, and he's had some injury issues, so who knows. But um, I think, you know, he, he's just, he could win a World Series soon. I mean, the Braves are so stacked now. I think they're bound to win a World Series sometime in the near future. Um, and I think he could really take the spotlight in a big-time World Series game or playoff game in the future. Um, I think if you look at his overall stats, he, may, he might also be, be on pace for, for making the Hall of Fame. Um, his best card is the 2009 Bowman Chrome Auto. Um, he had a 2008 Bowman Chrome card, but it wasn't an autograph card. Um, and that 2009 Bowman Chrome set is such an iconic set now because it has the Mike Trout Auto. Um, and you can get a, um, a 2009 Bowman Chrome Auto of his for around $300 in a PSA 10. And um, his flagship card is a 2011 Topps number 145, which you can get for less than 30 bucks in a PSA 10. All right, next player to look out for in this, in this um, off season before the 2020 um, MLB season kicks off. Mike Soroka. Um, he just had a hell of a rookie season. And played a few games the prior year, but I think this is considered his first full rookie season. Um, he was named an all, MB, uh, all uh, MLB team. He had a 2.68 ERA with 14 wins, and he's only 21, which is really young for a pitcher. I mean, a lot of times pitchers take a, quite a while to to, to uh, develop before they get called up. Everyone's always talking about Walker Buehler, but uh, who knows? I think Soroka could be the next Kershaw. Uh, pitchers are always a really risky investment, but this guy's stuff is pretty affordable. His best card is the 2015 Bowman Chrome Auto. Which you can get for a little over a hundred dollars in a BGS 9.5, and that's a really tough set. The 2015 Bowman Chrome set, a lot, a lot of scratches, and it's, it's it's pretty well, it's pretty common for cards to be off centered from that year. Um, you can get that card raw for forty bucks, and his flagship card to get is his 2018 Topps Update US 68. Okay, next player on this list, Rafael Devers. He had a huge third year, or second year, if you don't include his like really short 2017 season. He had a 5.3 war, batted 311, he had 201 hits, and 32 home runs. I mean, those are monster numbers. Um, came in only 12th in the MVP voting, which is surprising to me. Um, his best card is his 2015 Bowman Chrome Auto. He has a 2014 Bowman card, but it's... Uh, it's on autograph, so the one to get is his 2015 Bowman Chrome Auto. You can get that for a little over $200 in a PSA 10 or BGS 9.5. Uh, his flagship card to get is the 2018 Tops number 18, which you can get for 20 bucks in a PSA 10. Uh, I honestly I don't expect him to have these kind of numbers this upcoming season, to be honest, but uh, when or if Mookie Betts leaves, he and Bogarts are going to be the guys on the on the Red Sox um, I'm not sure if he's an elite player um, but I wanted to include him on this list because his cards I think are very reasonable and he just had just a excellent season this year all right these next two players are my dark horse players I guess you could say um, uh, describe why um, get some water real quick uh, Glaber Torres, he just really stole the show for most of the playoffs for the Yankees last year. Um, really showed he's matured beyond his years. He's only 22. Um, he's in a large market, and I think he could be a future MVP. I mean, um, his card to get is the 2015 Bowman Chrome Auto. Which is pretty pricey, but um, I really think the card to go after is his flagship um, Topps card, which is this guy. 
And this is also the uh, SSB card that is the, uh, I guess, brother of this Akuna card. Um, so this is the Super Short Prince from 2018 Top Series 2, the 699. Came about one per case. Uh, this Akuna came one per case, the bat down version. And this card I had said last year to pick up, it was $200 and it went up to $1,000 at the height. Now it's about $750 in the off season. But uh, this card right now you can get for roughly $150 to $200. I don't think it's gonna blow up quite like Akuna did, but this guy is on a major market team the, the biggest major market team, the Yankees. And um, if he turns into a great player, which he's he's showing promise. I mean, I think, um, what is the stat? Oh, he's the only Yankee beside Mantle and DiMaggio to make multiple All-Star games before 23. He's just, he's shown that he's, he's the real deal. And um, I think these cards are very affordable. And I would pick up a PSA 10 because these cards are tough to get. Both these cards are tough to get in PSA 10. There's just a lot of chipping that can happen in the corners of these cards because there's no border. So I think this card could be a dark horse of the hobby for the 2020 season. Um, really, it's cheap enough that I think you can't go wrong with it either way. Um, and then um, the other... Uh, Dark Horse player and card is Bryce Harper. Now, I think we all know that Bryce Harper had a very disappointing season last year. Even the last two seasons, he had a disappointing um, time. But um, last, you know, last year, he still hit 35 home runs, and he's at 216 home runs for his career, and he's only 26. So believe it or not, he's actually a strong candidate for a five-run home run club. Um, I think, you know, for a while there's this big debate on who's better, Mike Trout or, or Bryce Harper, and now we definitely know it's Mike Trout. But um, I think Bryce Harper could surprise a lot of people and pull off a MVP caliber season soon. Maybe not next year, but maybe the, the previous or the next season after that. I mean, he's a very streaky player, and I think he's, he still has a ton of potential. So his best cards are the 2011 Bowman Chrome Auto, which I think is still very expensive. It's $750 and a 9.5 or a PSA 10. And I think the big reason is because so many people put a ton of money in Bryce Harper and now he's just not playing well. And so they're trying to hold on to those prices as, as much as they can. But a car that's severely dipped in price, I think is an outstanding deal, is his first true flagship rookie card. Uh, this card started it all in terms of short printed um, Tops base cards, and that is the 2012 Tops number uh, 661 batting. This is a short printed card, even more short printed than the uh, Acuna that everyone was after, and the Torres I just mentioned. Um, um, this card it would, it would go for well over a thousand dollars not too long ago in the PSA 10. Now you can get a PSA 10 for around $500. Um, just, just a tough card to find in general. There's only 341 total graded by PSA, but there's probably less because for a time, they, PSA didn't really differentiate the uh, front up, leg front up variation with the batting. So there's probably less than 340 um, actual um, batting short print cards. Um, so to me, that is like this, this tops 2012 tops number 661 card is a card to to not forget about because I think Harper could have a big season, and even if he doesn't, um, it's a very kind of historic card because this is the first time Tops ever had a short printed card in their set as part of a their their main set. Um, okay, so before I finish, I wanted to give you guys. A, uh, a kind of a bonus some retired players that could be future hundred future Hall of Famers that are under the radar first guy is Billy Wagner um, he's a closer that could have a very good chance of making the Hall of Fame um, Trevor Hoffman Lee Smith and, and of course Rivera all recently got in as closers um, but Billy Wagner has 
the second lowest ERA. Um, um, Rivera has the has the best lowest ERA um, in the last hundred years, but his ERA for his career was two point three one, which is just insane. Um, he's not. It's it might take him a couple years again because he played in less than one thousand innings at nine hundred three innings for his career. Uh, no pitcher, including closers, have pitched less than a thousand that have gotten the Hall of Fame. Uh, but I think over time, people are gonna you know look at his stats and just realize this guy was just an incredible player and. I think he retired at 39, and he could have kept playing, and that could have padded his stats even more. I mean, he, he retired when he was still good, but he, he wanted to spend time with his family. Um, but why I even mention this player? Because he is a pitcher, and pitchers aren't usually worth a ton of money. Um, is because his key card is actually the 1994 SB card. Um, now, this is the same set that has the A-Rod card in it, and the, the 1994 SP set is very condition-sensitive. It's not as condition-sensitive as the... 1993 SP set that has the Jeter rookie in it, but still, 1994 is tough, tough, tough. And so if Billy Wagner ever gets inducted to the Hall of Fame, that would be the card on his PSA registry sets. And right now there's only five PSA 10s, and I can guarantee you there's going to be way less PSA 10s of Billy Wagner's out there than A-Rod, because people were, right away people knew A-Rod's a, a player to, to hold on to, um, but I don't think anyone was taking great care of Billy Wagner cars, cards. Um, so that could be a dark horse card, the 1994 SP Billy Wagner card. Um, finally, the other future, possible future Hall of Famer to look out for, um, especially this off season, uh, he recently passed away what, a couple years ago, is Minnie Minoso. Um, so why Mini Minoso? Well, he's the Latin American version of Jackie Robinson. He was the first Latin black player to come into the league. Um, I think technically there actually was someone like the early 1900s, but first mainstream, I guess, uh, Latin black player. Um, he's just a hero to many, many ball players. Roberto Clemente wanted to be Minoso. Um, he hit over 300 for nine seasons. Led the league in triples for three seasons. Um, he had just a phenomenal career in the 50s, but he was just overshadowed by other greats like Mantle and Mays and Aaron, etc. Um, just kind of a weird fact about him. He played in five different decades. So his rookie season, he only played in nine games, but it was in 1949. Then he played in the 50s and the 60s. And then he retired but came out of retirement in 1976 at 50 and played in three games. And then, for the fifth decade, he came back at 54 and played in two games in 1980. Um, so that, it was definitely just a publicity stunt, but he did play in five decades. Um, but why he's a great um, player to look at this offseason is because he could get inducted into the December 2020 Golden uh, Days Committee. Um, and... If he does, I think it will probably be due to his contribution to breaking barriers. I mean, he was a great player as well. But he has a good chance of getting in. He, j he fell just four shorts shy in the 2014 Golden Era uh, ballot. But why he really he's on this list is because his rookie card comes from the 1952 Topps card, Topps set. Um, there's only two true Hall of Fame rookies from that set, and that's Eddie Matthews and Hoyt Wilhelm. So Minoso would be the third a Hall of Fame rookie card from that set. And that set is just, it's legendary. I mean, it's the, if you name the three biggest sets in the hobby, it would be the 1952 Tops, 1933 Gaudi, and the Tito Six sets. Um, and the Minoso card is also just a very low pop uh, if you get a card above PSA 7. And it's pretty com pretty affordable compared to most cards from the 1952 Tops sets. But if he gets inducted in the Hall of Fame, that card's going to skyrocket. Um, all right, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I kept it to about 30 minutes, which is kind of long, but I wanted to talk about a lot of different cars and players I think are worth looking at this off season before the 2020 season kicks off. Um, let, you, let me know what you think. There's other players that are worth looking out for as well. I'd love to know. That's it. Later.